Hello, and welcome to another installment of a series of videos in which I'll be talking you through the basics of the programming language, Python. If you haven't watched the first video yet, then I suggest you head over to that, otherwise, let's get on with it. Where we left off, we discussed the basic input, process, and output structure of every program, as well as talking about how this is achieved within Python. In this episode, we'll be talking more about variables, but more specifically, the type of information that can be stored within them. We refer to the type of information that sits inside a variable as the data type. The type of a variable can affect its functionality within the code. Python sets the type of a variable when that variable is assigned data. Other languages require you to specify this. This can be seen as a blessing or a curse depending on how particular you are when it comes to coding. Python makes use of a lot of data types. The ones we're going to be looking at in this video are integers, floats and strings. An integer refers to data which takes the form of a whole number. A float or a floating point refers to data which takes the form of a decimal number. And finally, strings are collections of letters, numbers and symbols. Humans called these words. We've seen strings used in the first episode of the series. They can be seen between two quote marks. Now on to actually creating them. To create a variable of a specific type, we follow the equal sign with an appropriate value as demonstrated on screen now. We're able to convert variables from one data type to another, providing the information inside those variables are compatible with both types. An example of this is the string value 1, 2. We're able to convert this to the integer value 12. We can convert any variable to an integer or a float using the int and float commands. Similarly, we can convert a variable to a string using the str command. We'd often find ourselves converting data that's been retrieved using the input command. All data retrieved from the input command comes to us as a string. This is fine in cases that we just want to display this information, however if we want to use this information in calculations, we're going to have to convert it. This is done like so. As mentioned earlier, depending on the data type of a variable, the function of an operator will be different. For example, if you use the addition operator on two integers, it just adds the two numbers together. But as we saw in the previous episode, if you use an addition on two strings, it concatenates the two. The float and integer data types, and any other number-based type, can be multiplied, divided, added, and subtracted from one another. There's loads of other interesting interactions that Python lets you get away with. For example, you can multiply strings with integers to replicate that string multiple times. This, of course, combined with the mind of a 12-year-old, can be used to cause havoc, as demonstrated on screen now. With great power comes great responsibility and all that, as well as the hundreds of things that you can do with data types, there's also a lot that you can't get away with. For example, you can't convert alphabet or symbol-based strings to integers. It might make sense to convert the string 12 to the integer 12, but computers just aren't that clever. You also can't multiply two strings together. Billy1997 multiplied by hell is empty just doesn't make any sense. There are loads of other combinations that do and don't work, but we could be here all day listing those. The best way to understand all this is to practice trying data types out together and see what happens. Now we get to the good bit, writing our own code. What we're going to be doing is estimating a user's birth year from their age. Similarly to the previous episode, if you think you know what you're doing, pause now, otherwise I'll talk you through the process. Now the first thing that we need to do is get the user's age from them. Then we can ask them for the current year, or we can hard code it. Finally from this, we can calculate the birth year. We'll continue from our previous program. To get the user's age, we can use an input statement. Remember though, all data returned from the input command will be of a string data type, so we'll need to convert it to an appropriate number type. We'll use integer. Now, as mentioned before, we can hard code the current year by just assigning 2018 to a variable, or we could ask the user for what year it is. If you want to really show off, you can get the current year using a command, but don't worry too much about that, any of those solutions is fine. Finally, to estimate their birth year, we subtract our age from the current year. We can then store this in a new variable to print back to the user, or we can just print the evaluation of that sum straight back to them. I prefer to store intermediate values just in case you want to use that information later on, but again, either solution's fine. We can print this information back out with a little message. We do this similarly to what we did in the previous episode. We take our string message, you were born in, and then we can use the plus operator and attach our calculated number to the end. There's a big issue here now though, we can't add numbers to strings. What we'll have to do is convert the calculated value to a string to then be added to our message. Hit F5 and test this out. To test this program, I'm going to be taking the role of a user named Oliver, age 24. And there we have it. We've successfully converted between various data types, as well as played with the interoperability of these types with one another. In the next episode, we'll be looking specifically at string operations, and what weird and wonderful things we can get up to with them. But until then, remember to keep practicing, and again, for further reading, visit the website in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and remember to leave a like, and if you really enjoyed this, remember to subscribe and hit that bell button to keep updated with this series. Feel free to ask questions in the comment section below. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.